Hello everyone. In this section, I am going to discuss about controlling the boot process. It is one of the important section of this course module. So let's start with the agenda. We'll start with describing the Red Hat Enterprise Linux boot process. So it's very important to understand the booting process of a Linux. And also we'll discuss how to set the default target used when booting and boot a system to a non-default target. And then we'll discuss how to log in to a system and change the root password when the current root password has been lost. So this is a lab session. And also we'll do how to you know manually repair the file system configuration or corruption issues that is stop your boot process. So this is all we are going to understand in this entire section. Let's discuss the booting process of a Linux operating system. I have created a diagram which will help you to understand the step by step process of a Linux booting. So let's start. Suppose I have a physical x86 64-bit system on which I have already installed a Linux operating system and that is RHL 8 and I have just power on my system and my system is started booting. So very first thing that comes into the picture that is your BIOS basic input output system or we can say this is the first thing which loads once you power on your system. A BIOS is an interface between your hardware and software at a very basic level. So few things happen at BIOS. The first one is your POST, power on self test. So whatever the hardware that is connected with your system, it could be memory card, your CPU, it will do the self testing. After a successful test, the BIOS checks for the bootable device. Now you want to boot your system. So to boot the system, what does it require? It requires bootable device. It could be hard disk, your CD drive. You can boot your system with the OS CD that you can put in the CD drive and you can boot your system. You can also boot your system via USB, via LAN, via network, via HB card. So there are multiple way to boot your system. But in this case, we are considering as HDD as first boot device. So you can select the boot priority. So here I have selected SDD and on SDD I have defined my hard disk on which I have already installed the Linux operating system. So here we have now my system started booting and they have got the hard disk as well on which I have already installed the Linux operating system. The BIOS then checks the MBR master boot record in the hard disk. It is always in the first sector of the bootable disk with a size of 512 bytes. So MBR is present in the first sector of the bootable disk. I have segregated this my 512 bytes. So first 446 bytes that is for the bootloader or we can say the primary bootloader and next 64 bytes that is for the partition table and the rest is for the magic number that is for the error detection if you have any issue with the MBR then will this will help you now this bootloader is not your main bootloader so this bootloader is just having the address of your secondary bootloader or we can say your main bootloader because MBR is very small it is it is of size of 512 bytes we cannot recite the entire M entire bootloader into the MBR. So here it is just keeping the sector information about your main bootloader. Your main bootloader is your grub2 which resides inside a file system that is your slash boot. So at that point your system doesn't have the access to the file system. 
so who helps the system to go inside the file system that is your MVR in the MVR we have the bootloader and this bootloader simply tells that you have to go to this location that is your grub2 that is your slash boot in which you will get the grub2 now my system has reached to the grub2 so grub2 that is a grand unified bootloader version 2 and uh, grub functionality simply it loads the kernel into the memory but the question is here the system will boot from which kernel from which init ram fs that will be defined in this file that is a slash boot slash grub2 and grub.cfg file so this is the grub configuration file your grub2 is going to consult with this file and will come to know that this is the kernel and this is my init ram fs and also it displays a menu where you, you can select which kernel to boot so when you system boot you will see that there is a menu coming and if you have more than one kernel to boot your system it will give you an option you can select uh, from which kernel you want to boot and after that it loads this kernel this is your vm linux kernel image and here i have given a location as well so this is just an you know sample vm linux i have given and also it extract the content of any tramfs image the grub2 bootloader loads the kernel into the memory and also extract the content of any tramfs image and places them into the memory your any tramfs is an archive containing all the kernel modules and drivers now what will happen next the kernel is there in the memory your modules is also there your init ram fs is already extracted and its modules is available in the memory now kernel wants to execute now kernel will you know initialize the hardwares it will you know try to mount the root file system it will try to start the init process but kernel requires modules for that it requires drivers for initializing the hardware so from where the kernel is going to get all those things it will take all those things from init ram fs which is already extracted and present in the memory kernel initializes all the hardware for which it can find a driver in the init ram fs after that your kernel is going to execute your slash has been slash init and uh, here you can see that the process id would be 1 and on rhl8 your slash has been slash init is a link to system d and one more thing system d we all know that it is the first process that is starts after the system boots and also it is the final process that is running when the system shut downs and it controls the final stage of booting and prepares the system for use it also speeds up the booting by loading services concurrently system d executes init rd.target the system d instance from the init ram fs executes all units for the init rd.target this includes mounting the root file system on disk onto this location that is your slash sys root so what will happen next it will be starting the services your system d will try to you know start the required services and also it will mount the root file system under slash sys root that is only the temporary basis and after that your system start booting and once the system is coming up your root file system will be switched from the temporary that is under slash sys root to the main point that is under root the kernel root file system switched from the init ram fs root that is slash sys root to system root file system that is slash and system d re-executes as system version after that system d looks for the default dot target so in this file it has mentioned that the system should boot from which run level 
it could be your multi user mode or graphical mode right and uh, it is start and it stops the unit so this is the file for the default dot target here you can see the system d it reads this file and uh, in this file you can mention manually as well which run level you want so for example this is the you know link for that and to determine the default system target equivalent to the run level and the system target file defines the services that systemd starts so here the systemd allows you to you know manage various types of units on the system that including the services that is name dot service and targets that is name dot target devices file system mount points that is your name dot mount and sockets name dot sockets so this is a basic idea about how the system boots i believe with this picture you got some idea like how the system boots so friend that's all for this lecture we'll see you in the next lecture bye